Hi friends, welcome to my health and care titled videos where we can come together and we can talk about being real on the road in any kind of struggles that we could go through either with physical health or just being healthy and today we're going to get into some emotional health issues that could happen to almost anybody on the road but definitely maybe certain personality types that might be affected from this series that I really want to talk about and get into that I personally struggled when I went on the road and I didn't share my journey on YouTube because of certain reasons that I'm going to get into. So we are going to get real about nomadic loneliness. Does it happen to everybody? And if it does, what you can do to maybe help work yourself through it. But remember, it's going to be different for everybody, even if you do struggle with it at some point in your journey, okay? And my journey might be just a tad different than other people's because of my personality, remember? And also, I did meet Kent along the road, but we were not, we were not always together all the time, so that can also affect things and my journey and what I went through, okay? So are we ready to get real about nomadic loneliness? All right, so let's talk about it. All right, so first let's talk about different personality types. You have, remember, your extroverts and introverts. And that can help whether a particular personality type might have more of a challenge on the road than another personality type. Now, definitely extroverts could probably have a huge um, problem being on the road because they get energy off of people. So they're really going to need to find a group of people almost immediately in the beginning, <laughs> you know, or somehow making connections pretty quickly. Um, and we'll get into more about how to do that as I continue with other episodes. I'm calling this one episode one, the beginning, and some of the things that I personally went through. And then maybe some people could relate with that. Well, then you have your introverts. Well, I'm kind of in the middle. I'm kind of more introvert, but yet through uh, relationships, work, stuff like that, I became more in the middle because I became a dog trainer. I was always around people. I really enjoyed that part of my career and being around people and teaching them how to train their dogs and I did group classes and stuff like that. So it's not like introverts can't be around people. They do enjoy being around people, but remember they also like to have their alone time to reboot. But for me, if I end up having too much alone time at that particular time in my, my world, then I could end up going into depression. You know, I, could, I was struggling with depression off and on through my life. And part of it was just being alone way too much when I wasn't at work, you know. So um, it's been a long journey to try to get to where I am today. Okay, and why I didn't share some of my struggles on the road is because you'll get people that when you share, when you're struggling with something, their first impression is to say, well, you, just, you shouldn't be on the road, then you, should, you, you need to get off the road. And they don't understand that even through um, 
you know the downs there's there could be growth if the person is going to try to look for the growth okay and I'm always the you know this kind of person that I'm very real with my in in my mind I'm very real with what I'm going through my struggles um, but I might not express it out there to a whole lot of people maybe the people that are the closest to me here at the most and I probably wear them out <laughs> you know because I'm an introvert and we kind of cling to certain kinds of people or, or tight friends um, but as far as really putting it out there on YouTube what I was going through I didn't want to be that vulnerable because I knew right away that people would be saying, well, get off the road. You don't need to be on the road then, <laughs> you know, because they don't understand that if we ran from every obstacle in life that we go through, we would never mature, change, grow. And I've always been that kind of person. People, certain kinds of people that aren't looking for that in their life wouldn't really understand or make that connection okay so with that in mind with the kind of person that you know I am I'm gonna share the beginning of some of the things that I went through and maybe for some of you could go through as well so when I embarked on my journey in the beginning I definitely was so excited you know I did my coast trip came back wahoo you know life was just amazing it was great um, it was new just everything was new I got travel back in my world because my disabilities had taken a lot of my freedom of traveling away from me and I felt my van serenity gave that back to me so after that coast trip I was just on fire for the possibilities of getting back to traveling and camping and all the things that I started to struggle with. So I was so excited about all that. So I said, Arizona, here we come. And I got my solar put on my van and I got ready to embark on the journey of a lifetime. And I made my way down to Arizona to go to my first RTR. Another thing that helped me at that particular time was I did start my channel, okay? And I started that around 4th of July uh, is when I embarked on the channel. And then I started my um, actual full time in August is my anniversary. So I just kind of hit my anniversary as I'm wanting to talk about this subject, <laughs> you know, three years now on the road. I can't believe it's been three years, but it has. So I embark on this journey, making my way to Arizona. And in the beginning, I was really very rarely alone. I met up with friends. The, I met up with Sam, who I bought the van from. I met other, you know, people that had channels. At that time, Deborah Joy. And we met up um, down in Arizona. And then, of course, I hung out with my friend Sam at RTR. And then life did a change on me, right? <laughs> so let's talk about that one. <laughs> okay, so now this is January of 2017. At the end of that month, I end up meeting Kent from Northwest Hiker and his dog Rocky. So if you're new to my channel and you don't know our story about our journey and meeting and everything, I will put a link above, <laughs> whatever direction it is, of a video that I did on a past anniversary series of our journey together, but it's a pretty it's a pretty cool story. So to make a long story short, um, we meet, we email, we get to know each other, we talk on the phone, we start building a friendship that led to us camping together. And we end up camping about four months together. And I bonded with him and his dog Rocky at that time. And I had my dogs Milo and Buster. 
and it really does help to obviously have pets if you have dogs even though it's more of a challenge to have pets on the road and we can talk about that in another episode it definitely makes a difference I'm sure than just being totally alone but for me it was really great everything was fine but I'm more of these the type of person that really needs some kind of one-on-one person-to-person -on -one, um, -person action I mean um, interaction sorry I've always been that kind of person I don't need lots of people around me I've never been that way but I really have had very good close friends that I could always have in my life you know and whether a boyfriend or you know, a really best friend that I go hiking with. And in the city, you have that, but on the road, you lose that, okay? Very quickly, you can. So it's now getting to be April. I've made a really huge connection and bond with him and his dog, Rocky, at this time that we have to go our own way because I have a doctor's appointment that I have to get back to that is in June, beginning of June, okay? And also I had my senior dog Buster with Milo at that time and he needed to see his vet for a, a heart condition that he was battling. So Kent and I go apart and we're going to end up meeting back together in about two months back in Oregon and he invited me to go and see the Oregon Jamboree that's at the beginning of August and then hang out together too afterwards and stuff like that so that was kind of cool I've never been alone at this time a very long time other than maybe six weeks total time so here I am embarking on this journey alone and it is a whole different feeling for women out there on the road alone and I'll get into that a little bit more um, before I end this video and seeing some cool places in Arizona which eventually led me to the Vermilion Cliffs. But still, during these several weeks of traveling through Arizona, I'm still feeling very lonely. I am. It's just this tug, this, this, this depression in between seeing all the great beautiful places. I still was just really working through now doing this adventure again on my own, <laughs> you know, even though Kent would email me and stay in touch, we'd share pictures and our journey and it, but you're, you're still alone and I can't explain it. It was just a thing that I had to end up working through at that time of loneliness, you know, because he's not really with me all the time or the comfort and security of knowing that somebody is still maybe not camped right next to you, but within the vicinity of you. So that is a whole different ball game that you have to start to adjust to, right? So I get to the Vermilion Cliffs and while I'm struggling with those kind of feelings, uh, my little dog Buster ends up going through um, heart failure his heart starts to fail on him before getting him back to Oregon and I have to get him to Hurricane Utah and they did have to euthanize him. So during the next month of trying to get back to Oregon and I have to make this doctor's appointment which was my drive actually which saved me from that go 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 you have to push you have to move through everything you're going through uh, because I had to get back to this doctor's appointment and also I had to be there for Milo but at this point now I'm starting to struggle with not only loneliness on the road but I am now struggling with uh, still the depression of being alone and now uh, losing my joyful little happy camper 
Buster. He made me laugh every day. He was just comical, funny. Um, Milo is a little more intense, you know. He's more, I don't know, grumpy, serious, I don't know. But Buster just like bark, 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 bark. You know, he was just the happiest little dog and loved people, loved going for walks. You know, I go, let's go walkie walkie, and he'd get all happy, you know, and want to go do his little walks. And he just brought a smile to my face. So now I'm trying to work through all of this at the, at the same time. I end up um, getting to back into Oregon and I'm, I'm starting to get really heavy in depression at this time. I mean, and loneliness was really oh, tugging on me so hard that I end up talking to my friend um, Sam, who's like my big brother. He's the one I ended up buying the van from and we were, we're really good friends. We stay in touch a couple times a year. And so I hung up with him and I got to thinking, well, gee, either I can stay in this place or I'm going to need to work through it, obviously, and very quickly because I was pretty depressed. I didn't want to tell Kent what I was going through completely because I didn't want him to think that I was a weak person and I didn't tell you all what I was going through because once again I didn't want you to think I'm I'm a weak person right I didn't let myself be vulnerable with all of the feelings and emotions and everything I am trying to work through at that time and I'm sure everybody could understand the grief when you lose a dog on top of everything but it was pretty heavy going through those two things at one time so that's when I ended up deciding to um, create a ladies Facebook group called the pink rollers because I started to think how many other women are alone out there struggling with being alone and women definitely have different fears and issues and things that we go through on the road than men do. It's a, it's a fact. And so I wanted to make this ladies group for us women, okay? So we can relate together and interact together and support one another, encourage one another, share our ups and downs and stuff like that of what we could go through on, on the road. Try to make something positive out of this ordeal which was the best thing that I could have done as I'm working through this situation. So I'm going to kind of leave it here until the next episode. Now my growth was far from being over at this point. I had to go through many other challenges and changes that started to come up in my world as time went on. And I'll disclose that more of my journey in the next couple of episodes of subjects that I would like to talk about of mastering nomad loneliness, okay? And if you can relate to anything that I have so far disclosed, definitely put it down in the comments. But I am really excited about this topic, this subject, because I think sometimes um, the nomad community can make too light of the situation for some personality types out there, okay? And I'm one of those people that I'm very um, more sensitive, a little more emotional. I really wear my heart out on my sleeve. And I'm a little bit different personality type. And I know there's many other people out there like me where you have your real introvert, introvert people that really 100% like their solitude. And so they're not gonna get affected by 
nomad loneliness like maybe people like me now I actually now have changed and I really do love more of my personal time now than ever before but boy it took a few years for me to get to this place but we'll talk about more of that in the next video but in the meantime put in the comment if you you know would like to share anything or just if this touched your heart in any kind of way I look forward to hearing what you have to say but stay tuned to the next part as I disclose more okay so I love you all and I look forward to seeing you in the next video as we touch on this subject and getting real I'll see you then enjoy the journey and clips and, and everything and I want us to look at them in celebration of his life let's not think of his death but celebrating his life Buster, you're so cute. You just want to be so close to me. You gotta put your <laughs> your little um head on my shoe. That was so cute. You're so adorable. I love you, my baby. <laughs> This is Buster when we were at the Redwoods. My cutie pie at the Redwoods. See if I can get the Redwood behind him. There's the tree, a little bit of the tree. Whoops, I just kicked up some dust. <laughs> there he is. And there's the Redwood right behind him. We had such a cool trip and he enjoyed himself a lot. I love you, my boy. All right, so here's Buster. Here's his new look. Oh my gosh, isn't that something? Oh, so they shaved him so close and underneath his chin. And then they took um, this down. It's okay, sweetie. So they shaved all up above the head and then they stopped right here. And then this, so this part here was like super duper long. I mean, I took, I took quite a bit off. Here are the pups. Milo, stay. <laughs> See if I can get him. Buster, he loves to go on his walks. Buster, people want to say hi to you on YouTube. Buster, Buster, <laughs> he loves his walks. <laughs> This is Milo. He's in his little winter coat. <laughs> We're off to our, it's a beautiful little place that I go walking. Buster, say hi to everybody. <laughs> this is for all those that love my pups. Yeah, he's doing good. I think his eye, I, I think it's looking much better. I know there's just a quick glance. He Before I leave, I wanted to get one more shot with Buster. Look how cute he's doing. <laughs> that was just too cute to uh, not get. <laughs> he's doing, watch me, watch me. Good boy, watch me. Look how good his eyes are looking. Watch me, 
Good boy. Look at that. I am so happy with how he's looking. Okay. And Hi, all my friends. Um, Buster and Milo and myself want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. And uh, we want to wish everybody a Happy New Year, too. May your year be full of just all the goodness that life can bring you. Love, joy, peace, and laughter. I just have to get this. This is just so adorable. These guys just sitting here so precious in their little bed. <laughs> oh, big yawn. Big yawn for Milo. <laughs> Right, they're just so adorable. <laughs> I love them so much. They're just so precious. <laughs> All right, so there's Buster and Milo, and they also um, are so happy that you guys are following them <laughs> in their journey uh, with me. All right, I have to get this. This is just too darn cute. We're all, I'm sitting out here with my friend Sam and also um, Elaine. And look at these guys. So they're all bundled up. They want to be out with us as we're enjoying the night, hanging out. <laughs> Isn't that too cute? For all, my, all the fans out there that just love my two little fur babies. Okay, Grandpa, you gotta wait for us. Look at this little guy. He's a little trooper there where I'm walking and he's like way out there and, you know, and he's just like booging. And we're like, I can't keep up with this little guy. It's like, slow down, wait for me. All right, I'm walking the dogs. I like to um, ride at sunset sometimes to take them out and take them for a quick little walk and stretch their legs and enjoy the beautiful sunset. So here's the pups. Let's see if I can show you. They don't jerk on my arm. There they are. Come here, guys. He's been doing a little bit more coughing or kind of this wheezy kind of breathing thing. But, um, yeah, I'm kind of getting a little worried about my boy. Here's Milo. <laughs> Too close there, honey. <laughs> uh, yeah. Buster. Buster, baby. There's my baby. Oh, I love my baby. There's my baby. Mm. Love you, sweetie. I love you. This is a tribute to you, sweetie. Love you. <laughs> Always in my heart. Always in my heart, love. Love bug. My little love bug. Faster. There you go. <laughs> yeah. 